This is a Seahawk 4 inflatable boat. Today, I'll show you how to make a floor for an inflatable boat. I'll show you the step-by-step -step for how to make the floor, a complete material list, and stay tuned to the end, and I'll show you how to use your car to inflate your boat. The first step for building this boat floor is to cut my sheeting. For that, I need a pattern. Let me flip the Seahawk 4 over, and I'll show you a trick. All right, so here's the trick for making the pattern. As you can see, that's the bottom of the boat and that's the floor. This edge here, you can see on the other side, that's the absolute edge of the floor. All I need to do is transfer that pattern over to my sheeting. To make the pattern, I'll just use some plastic and a Sharpie. Just use a little tape to hold it in place while I trace my pattern. I'm just using my Sharpie and I'm going right along that seam. That makes my pattern. I find it's a little helpful if you take your fingernail and press down in there first. Then you kind of get a little line going. The same thing back here, use my fingernail. My little line. For my sheeting for the boat floor, I'm using OSB plywood. OSB has several advantages over conventional plywood. The oriented strand design keeps all of the wood grains random, which makes it very rigid. Conventional plywood tends to bow. The thickness of OSB that I'm using is sold as 1930 seconds. I think it's gonna be plenty thick for my floor. Let me get the pattern transferred over to the OSB, then we'll get it cut. Before I actually cut my floor, I've made up this little template of OSB. This piece is 32 inches long. I plan on using swimming pool noodles on my edge and I've cut two pieces of that. Let's see how it fits in there. It's pretty snug. Before I go any further, let me show you the exact measurements of the boat floor the way it is right now. Our total length of this floor is 95 and a half. At the widest point, it's just under 32. I've let the air out of chamber two and I put down these moving blankets. Let's see how this thing fits. I think it looks pretty good. Now, the idea here is once I reinflate chamber number two and put the swimming pool noodles on it, this thing's gonna be locked into place. Now I'm gonna cut the floor in half so it fits in the back seat of a car or an SUV. Even though I am covering it with carpet, I wanna make sure I don't have any splinters. Before I attach the carpet, I've sanded both sides of the OSB so that my carpet adhesive can make a good contact. Now I need to remove all the sawdust. To glue down my carpet, I'm using the 3M Super 77 Multi-Purpose Adhesive. I just finished a carpet adhesive competition video and I'll put a link to that video at the end of today's video. And if you watch that video, you'll understand why 
I'm using this. The piece of carpeting that I'm using today is a six foot by eight foot piece of indoor outdoor carpet that I picked up at Home Depot. I'm gonna cut this thing in half and give myself two three foot by eight foot pieces. That will give me a piece of carpet for each half of my floor. My plan here is to glue and to wrap each half of the floor. That way the seam will be carpeted where it butts together. To shake my adhesive, I'm using my DIY spray can shaker. If you wanna watch the build video for this, I'll put a card right up here. Here are some tips for spraying the 3M spray adhesive. I find that a nice, even, moderate coat seems to work the best. I'm paying close attention to the edges so that I can put a nice thicker coat around the edge. To use this adhesive, I'm gonna spray both the carpet and the OSB. Allow them to dry to tack and then I'll put them together. I'm just using a piece of ABS pipe to roll my carpet onto the adhesive. Now we'll do the other side. The reason I'm using the spray adhesive is because I don't want to use staples. Staples can come loose over time and it's an inflatable boat. I'm going to trim the edge of the carpet with a brand new razor blade. I just hit the edges one more time with the belt sander just to make sure there's no splinters. Now it's time for the swimming pool noodles. I'm not going to attach these swimming pool noodles because my thought here is that these will be disposable. So I'll just friction fit. After I make sure this floor fits, we're going to take this thing to the lake and see how it performs. I've inflated the outside chamber and the floor chamber. Once the floor is in, I'll inflate the inner chamber. I've cut a piece of dry erase board that I'm gonna to use to stabilize the seam. All three chambers are inflated and I'm thinking maybe these swimming pool noodles might not even be necessary. After a little experimentation, I'm finding that if I put the swimming pool noodles in the void along the sides underneath the floor, I don't have to put them on the edge of the floor. And I'm pretty satisfied with this seam. Let's take this thing to the lake and see how it performs. With this 12 volt pump and this extension cord, I can inflate the boat right from a car. You could even use a battery pack like this one. I'll leave affiliate links for all the products in today's video in the description down below. I'm 
been making several videos for modifications I'm doing to the Seahawk 4 inflatable boat, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of them. I'm pretty happy with the results from this floor build. This floor feels thick enough to get the job done and it only weighs about 30 pounds. I really like the way this boat floor performed out on the water. This thing was pretty stable, even with a little bit of waves. I'm really happy that I used glue instead of staples, and this two-piece system is definitely a work in progress. I'll be adding plywood clips to help keep these two pieces of floor together. I don't mind if it flexes a little bit, but I can't have them coming apart. I'm curious to know your thoughts about this boat floor build. Leave them in the comments down below and check out this video for this product review that I did for this motor mount so that I can use my gasoline motor with this boat. I'm glad you watched and I hope you'll watch again.